but there's a lot of companies that are doing incredibly well right now. So research all of those industries that are doing extremely well and just go after them because they they need help, right? They, they have orders they can't fulfill. They need to do marketing that they don't have the people to do. Um, so there's, there's opportunity everywhere. And that's like, that's the job of the entrepreneur is to find the opportunity and to find that and fill that void and fill that gap. Um, so anything else that you guys want to add? And again, for everyone, you know, uh, please drop some, some questions. We have a few coming in right now, but, um, please drop some questions. Now's the time before we wrap up here. As I can see in the marketing and advertising strategy section, there's two votes how to create more awareness for your product. Yeah. Um, I, I, Eric, I think you, you've done a lot with affiliate programs before, right? There, people are asking in the ask a question thing. It looks like we got a couple. All right. Yeah. We, either way, I can answer. With yeah. Either. So I think let's go with the first one uh, real quick. So uh, this is from a, um, you were clearly self -motiva motivated and goal oriented on the entrepreneur front. How did you develop yourself as a leader and how did you draw your team together? Yeah. I mean, you just got to care. Like it, 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 if like, I actually like people. So people, when I was starting the business, like, Ooh, you're starting a people business. That's miserable. You have to deal with people. Like don't get me wrong. We've had assholes coming in and out of Hawk and it happens, but in general, I like people. So the idea of bringing people together and learning how to lead and like, you know, it, it it's just that it came kind of naturally because I want to. I want to be that person for my people. And I, I, I'm self-aware enough and, frankly, not just self-aware enough. I have enough people around me that tell me when I'm being an idiot. But I continue to hone that and try to be better and better at being that leader for my people and get the feedback. Like, I really try to have a transparent organization. So when I say something stupid, I hear about it 70 times. And when I do something right, I usually get some good feedback, too. And then you just start to understand why did that work? Why, when I said this, did people get pissed off? But when I said this, it, people got super fired up and you start to understand how to communicate with your people. And every culture is different. Interesting. Do you have any specific things that people should avoid? Like, yeah. what, what were, do you have any like one or two things that got people really pissed off that you, you yeah. no and one should probably general, do? And then vice versa on like yeah. what made people pumped up? In general, praise publicly, scold privately or criticize privately, whatever they say. So like, I've just noticed like every time, if I'm talking to the whole team, it's got to be positive. If I need to say something negative, I've got to grab the individual. And if it's a bunch of people, I got to grab them each individually. And it sucks gotcha. from my perspective, but like that, I've, I have to remind myself of that all the time because I want to get up in front of like my sales team and be like, all you fuckers need to, and that doesn't do anything. You got to get up and praise the people. Like, you know, what is it? What there's, there's a line about it, but basically people drive, if you praise the people that are doing well, the people that aren't want to strive for that. If you shit on the right. it, it, uh, we had a Navy SEAL speak yesterday that ran all the sniper training for the SEALs and they pivoted to this type of management. They used to be like, you're not worth it, da 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 da. They had like a 30% completion rate from sniper training. Went to 70% when they changed to being like positive reinforcement. And he talks about it pretty mm. simply. If you have a little kid and he's going up to play T ball and you or going up to play baseball, little league, and you say, hey, don't strike out, guess what's probably going to happen? But if you yeah, say, yeah, hey, yeah. swing for the fences, Guess what might happen? Yeah. It's about that positive reinforcement with people too. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, we have another one here that's that's right up your alley too. Um, it looks like Alex has a digital marketing agency. Mm -hmm. Recently lost uh, clients. How should he be pursuing new clients? Do you have any tips for him on what he should be doing right now? Uh, I mean, there's we we do a hundred different things, but I'd say the biggest support for us are our partners. We built really, really good relationships with a lot of people out there that we look out for, that look out for us, that help us continue to get business in, software partners, people that we've taken care of as well. So, you know, as I said, one of our core values is build community, like having a community of people around you to support each other. If you're flying lone bull, it can be difficult. So that's one. It's obviously, I don't want to say like, if you haven't done that yet, it's a little hard to just get started with that, but get involved in community. Like, the more social you can be right now, the more, and I don't mean physically, I just mean online, whatever, like that really helps being a part of organizations. I met Lane through Young Entrepreneur Council, which has been was super valuable and still is super valuable to me. And Lane was like the godfather in there. He helped everybody. Yes, I'm yeah. actually part of it as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I met Lane too. There you go. <laughs> 
That's awesome. Um, yeah, guys, keep the questions flowing. There's So we did a poll, too. Um, it seems like everyone's really interested in marketing and advertising strategies. Sure. Do you have any tips for people right now that are – and I, I mean, I'm I'm actually interested in this as well, just for us, because we're we're actually looking into, you know, spending more money on marketing and advertising right now, uh, yeah. you know, with our events, but then also just with like the app coming out and everything. What are your for people who are looking into like doing either paid media, uh, yeah. paid marketing advertising, or even just organic stuff? Do you have any tips, strategies that you see are working really well right now? Yeah, don't be deaf to what's going on right now we pit we i had my team three weeks ago pivot all creative that wasn't like maybe mm. some work like very little work but it's like if it's a picture of a bunch of people hanging out on the beach get fucking rid of it like change everything you're doing your messaging your creative across the board to acknowledge what's going on that doesn't mean you know covid 19 19 percent off sale because i have seen that yeah. That's fucking crazy but um i mean like of- understand that people are sitting in their houses understand that like what, no, and I, you don't have to get overly emotional about it or try to benefit from the situation, but just be, don't be tone deaf. I thought I saw a, a Range Rover ad that I thought was just on point. It was a picture of a Range Rover in the middle of like a giant mountain landscape by itself, and it said Range Rover social distancing since 1948. And it was just like a beautiful picture of the outdoors, and it was like that's that resonated. I don't like I, I had to respect that. Same thing with what, what Nike did. Just don't do it. Like, well done. Um, it's it's and so again, you don't have to actually play off the actual situation, but at least acknowledging it's super important. We saw like so two big agencies in our space that are like our size, pretty decent competitors, published that their you know sales across the board in fashion were down thirty percent uh, the first two weeks of like the true shutdown. We saw an, an increase of one percent. Not like it skyrocketed, but like fashion had, had done just fine, and most e-commerce had done just fine. And so I was like. That's funny. The only difference between them and us, because they all have the best practices we do, I bet they didn't pivot as fast with what's going on creative. They're probably still using the same ad sets and the same targeting methodology they were using before this started. And a lot mm-hmm. of your customers have changed since this started. So you have to pivot. You have to adjust. Um, I can go into general marketing tips, but I would say for now, making sure that what worked before you understand needs to change is important. And then just there's three categories you always have to think of. This is kind of general marketing. Awareness, nurturing, trust. How are you driving new awareness to your brand because you have to find new customers? How are you nurturing that awareness to actually convert them from just awareness to a customer? So email marketing, SMS, chatbots, just ongoing follow-up is super important. That also helps increase your lifetime value. And then how you're building trust. If you're a new brand, third-party validation like press or influencer testimonials and uh, reviews, et cetera, super critical. And then as you establish, it's really about consistency so that you become a reliable brand people can trust. That that's really, in a nutshell, those three things are always like the checklist. Like, how are you building new awareness? How are you nurturing that? Because every purchase has a consideration period, meaning from when they first learn about you and to when they buy. And like, just to give stats here, if you have a fifty dollar average order value, that's about three weeks on average. At a hundred dollars, it's about five weeks. Two hundred dollars, about six weeks. So like, it takes time for someone to decide to buy your product. So if you think you're just going to run a Facebook ad and sell a product, you're going to be missing out on most of your customers. So really building a full funnel, not being short-sighted with marketing, understanding everything takes time to build a brand. And then just in this kind of a situation, committing to be on the offense, attacking at it. I do agree with what Lane said. Don't be spending frivolously, but also don't just be sitting with money in your savings account, watching it dwindle because you decided to sit still and hang on for dear life. 